This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing, and we're going to be talking about gardening for the next little while. I seem to be talking a little bit fast for a southerner because I'm excited. We were off last week. Well, we weren't off. We were we were iced out in Java. Ain't nobody coming up here to let me in last Friday. Well, iced out. You can say we were iced in. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. You know, and uh, I had the foresight, not the foresight, you know, I, I'm not precocious that way. I've been through this enough to where I knew what was going to happen. So I went around my neighborhood the day before and the day of, you know, when the ice and stuff started coming down and took pictures. So I'd have before and now some after pictures. And uh, so, you know, I already know what some of the calls are going to be about this morning. Matter of fact, I could probably write one on a piece of paper and hold it up and and and, and you'll say, yep, yeah, we get a call about that. <laughs> because that's the way it is predictable. And a lot of stuff got damaged. Some of my stuff got killed. Some of it melted. Some My yard smells like stinking green chlor, rotten chlorophyll. I walk out there, it's like my yard is a pile of fresh rotten compost because it smells funky. I don't and, know. And as it was happening, Felder, I always remember you said we have plants that can take extremely cold temperatures, but when it's 60 degrees one day, 17 degrees the next, and then what, this week, it's been 65, 70 degrees. That's not good for your plants. Oh, yeah. Well, this is like I was walking around. I walked, you know, walk around the other morning. It was like 40-something degrees, and I'm thinking, this feels great. <laughs> you know, I mean, and it felt great because it wasn't 12 degrees yeah so that was yeah it, that was wild man I'm, I'm glad you got some pictures because um it was a, a for a moment it, it looked nice yeah and it was something to you know to behold but after that it was just all downhill okay i'm gonna uh can can, can you mute me and hear me say something to you real quick off the air uh okay no 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 I'm, no I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do a letter I'm 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 gonna mute I'm gonna mute you right now. Okay. Go ahead. Say what you want to say. Say go. Okay. Don't don't say it. We're okay. Gonna, I won't say a, it. We're gonna get a call about that. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> anyway, folks, it is a live program, and I brought some stuff to some show and tell, and some I got my nasty coffee cup, and uh, pretty cheerful. Walked in, and and uh, and birds are singing. The, there's some wildflowers blooming. There's bees out there. Uh, I haven't seen any butterflies yet, but uh, life is life. Life made it okay. Some of the stuff that didn't make it. I'll be honest with you, it wasn't supposed to be here to be. Snapdragons ain't from the south, okay? They don't like cold weather. They'll take cool weather. They don't like hot weather like we have in the summer. They grow snapdragons all summer up north. Down here, we grow them in the winter unless it freezes. So anyway, my snapdragons died. Oh, well. <laughs> You know, I I ate some food last night and had to wash my dishes. That's just part of it. Anyway, for the next little while, let's let's just talk about stuff. Do have some things to share with you, but let's start off right off the bat, all the way up the north part of Mississippi to South Haven, just south of Memphis. Good morning, Heidi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? So far, so good. Not so. Bad. I'm probably a little bit more cheerful than I ought to be. Nah, cheerful's great. <laughs> yeah. Make it till you make it. Yeah, what's, um, what's you I got? have some snap, not snapdragons. You got my own, by thinking about snapdragons. I have a whole bunch of hyacinths coming up that I was so worried about, and I'm I'm so very excited because they remind me of my mom's garden right. when I was a kid. But that's not my question. My question is, I got a couple of pots last year, good size ones from I don't know one of the big box stores, and they don't have any drainage in them. Yeah, what is your best trick because i've tried a couple things and it didn't work and i figured you had run across this in your lifetime i, I grow stuff in in pots that holds it about there's a couple of projects are these big pots like for outdoors or indoors yes outdoors okay uh, first of all you can go to a hardware store are they like like clay or ceramic or something plastic plastic okay drill some holes in the bottom if you you know if, if you want the drainage it's you know, a lot of the, if, if they're the, the ones that are sold as pots, if you turn it over, they got little indentations where you're supposed to drill the holes. Okay, so I can just use a regular drill and it's not going to crack it or anything? That was my concern. No, well, if it's cold, it will. Bring it inside. Bring them inside so they warm up a little bit. 
Okay. Uh, but but at the same time, you can also uh, are they really big, like too big to easily pick up and move around? Um. Well, when, when they got they're, dirt they're in them, they're full of dirt and and stuff. Yeah. Like that's where some of the hyacinths are coming up now. Yeah. So I was hoping I could just tilt it on its side and drill a hole, maybe. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no problem with that. Let's. Uh, it's supposed to warm up later today. You know, when yeah. it gets when it gets nice and warm, and uh, when you use your drill, uh, yeah, there's no problem doing that. You might even want to think about drilling the holes. You know, if you turn it over, you'll see some little indentations where you know, sort of like a hint where the hole's supposed uh-huh. to go. The other thing is, you know, what I do with some of mine is is uh, is I plant stuff in cheap plastic pots got holes in them inside. And set them down inside the more decorative pots and pull them out every now and then. That's a lot of trouble, though. And you can also think about turning one up to a nice little water garden. I like it. You know, I mean, anybody who's ever grown a sweet potato in a jar on their kitchen window, they've got all, or or fungus in a cup of coffee, got all the basics of water gardening down. Right on. But anyway, look on the bottom. I bet you find some little indentations. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Appreciate it, Heidi. Thank you. Bye. Okay, now we're going to slide over to Greenville, South Carolina. Stephen, what's going on, man? Hey, Felder, how you doing today? So far, so good. What's up? Where? What? what are you? Are you just passed through? Or are you calling from Greenville? I'm calling from Greenville. I grew up in Mississippi, but I've been in Greenville, South Carolina, for about five years now. Cool town, though. Oh, we love it. It's gorgeous up here. So I have a, a couple questions for you. One, I plan to plant some sweet viburnum. Yeah shrubs and i just kind of wanted to get a 101 on planting those some tips and tricks okay there's first of all there's nothing extra special about them to make them unique like a blueberry or something like that that need a little weirdness uh dig a hole that's wider than you feel comfortable if you don't feel a little stupid about it it's not wide enough and then this is true because, you know, stick your arms straight out, wiggle your fingers. That's what your tree wants to do, your, your, your shrubs, instead of being hunched up, you know, with stuff, you know, ran wrap around your shoulders. So dig it nice and wide. You don't have to add a bunch of stuff to it, but dig nice wide holes with the, the sides kind of roughed up. So roots, when they go out, they'll keep right on going. And then when you pull the plant out of the pot, lo- use your fingers and loosen up uh, uh, as much of the loose potting soil as you can maybe a few of the roots, and stir that into your, your, your native dirt just right around where you're going to plant it, and then plant it. So that way, instead of going from potting soil to dirt, it goes from roots in part your dirt, part potting soil into your dirt, and, and they'll keep right on going. So loosen, dig a wide hole, loosen up the roots. And those are the, okay. and then those are the most important things right there. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, Last no. question. Well, I, want, I want to ask you a question, though. Where you can What's put up? this thing? They get big. I know they do get pretty large, so I'm trying to create some privacy between us and the neighbors, and I was looking for a shrub that I'm able to, now I know they get large, but to trim. um, Kind of shear. I'm willing, exactly, I'm willing to do it, you know, twice a year if I have to. Yeah. um, But just to make sure that they are able to stick it up and. Um, have some sort of privacy between us and the neighbors, and hopefully, eventually, one day we'll build a deck. So I'm hoping they're tall enough yeah. to, uh, you know, create yeah. some privacy whenever we're a little higher yeah. on the ground. Well, a, a couple of things. Uh, this year, when they put on new growth, and the new growth gets a few inches long, go out there and just sort of shear the new growth a little bit, cut the new growth back a little bit, and that'll cause it to branch out and to thicken up. I wouldn't do it now, but let's let the new growth come out to get some, some length on them and then just cut them back. And every time you make a cut, that cut part is going to branch out two or three times. So it'll start filling out while it's still small. Okay. And, okay, uh, great. Thank you. And then the other thing, have you ever put your hand up, again, you know, you got the sun in your eyes, you hold your hand just right just to put the sun out without blocking the whole sky? Yes, sir. That's, that's, that concept is called a baffle. You can do that with two posts and any kind of fabric. It could be lattice. It could be a bore space a few inches apart. It could be burlap. But, you know, you could put a few of those here and there uh, when you get your deck built that look like pieces of fence, sort of like small billboards. They don't go all the way to the ground, but it's just like putting hands exactly between you and your neighbor's window, just where you want to block specific views. And then you can grow a vine or something like that on there. But but that gives yes. you instant privacy. I love that idea. I heard you talk about that recently. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely put that to good use in a certain area. I'll have to send you pictures once it's all finished. Good. No problem. 
Last question for you, non-plant related. Would I now? I know. I feel like you're pretty old school when it comes to you know um, certain things. But hey, when, when you get you? when you get white hair growing up your ears, you stop really caring about a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think you're missing out on a wonderful opportunity. I think that you should create an Instagram account. <laughs> now, I hear you talking, you know, you bring the plants in the studio. I do. Uh, yeah. You talk about uh, building your own bird bath. Like, why not be able to snap a quick picture posted to Instagram for all of us to be able to see it? Yeah. What an opportunity. I hear Look, you know, it. Is you, so you, easy. You it can't, is so easy. You don't imagine how many people tell me that every week. But you know I'm what? You, I don't. I don't. Kill it. I just don't buy. There's plenty of that out there. I just don't buy into that. I mean, I'm, I'm but just nobody like the Gestalt Gardener. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, you, you know, like, you, you got, I mean, Java. He's in there laughing. You know, Java, what, what, what you do can you give think, him Java? Private lessons, Java. Give we've, him private we, lessons, Java. He needs it. We've been down this road before, Stephen. That's why he's <laughs> laughing. So I'm, I'm with, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. You know, I'm just one. Of, I'm, I'm just like a bad gas wafting around. That's all. <laughs> well, look, I think that you're. I really think you're missing out on an opportunity, especially kids in my generation who would really, really appreciate it. So, well, look, I'm just throwing it out there, putting it out in the world. Java, be on them. I'm serious. Okay, well, I, okay, I'll tell you what, Steve, you send us a, a text or something like that, and, and we might do something. Who knows? All right, sounds good. Well, I appreciate okay. y'all's help. Y'all hey, have a good day. Hey, I'm glad you're outside. I hear the birds singing. It ain't it a great day to be outside? It's sure. Well, not in Greenville. It's cold and rainy. I heard some birds in the, in the background a minute ago. Well, they are splashing around, enjoying the water a little bit. But okay. um, I'm telling you, we're seeing a lot of red birds right now. I'm loving it. Good. All righty, man. Appreciate it, Stephen. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Let's uh, slide over to Jackson, Mississippi. Isn't this an interesting idea doing Instagram thing? Because it's not that hard. I just, you know, uh, whatever. Let's talk to David and Jackson. Hey, David. Good morning. Hey, Felder. How are you today? So far, it's not so bad. What's up? <laughs> I'm the same with you. Look. I just want to say that my girlfriend was so tired of me by the end of the week walking around <laughs> and pointing out plants and fondering and saying, that one's going to booglify. Oh, that, that one's going to make it. <laughs> that one's going to booglify. That's and a real good word. word. <laughs> she has to hear it again. I think she's going to flip out. But, but I just think it's, I, I, it's my favorite word so far. I think you, I heard it right before the new year when you mentioned it. Yeah. And I just. I use it every day. It's a, it's a, it's a good, it was coined by a friend of mine uh, named Clayton Allen. He was my roommate in graduate school. He's a linguistics uh, major. I was a horticulture major. And uh, I said, there's not a word for what happens when plants turn brown and mushy and drip and stink and just, you know, not just die, but just stink, you know, and melt. And he said, well, you can make your own word up, just booglify it. And it stuck. Listen, is your is your girlfriend listening no. Okay. No, let's find no, a way. No. Let's let, get in touch with you next door or something. Let's find a way to punk her. <laughs> All right. This sounds that sounds okay. real good. But one more thing, and this is this is something just another millennial following up behind him. But look, Java, you can do this part. I want a playlist of the tracks that y'all play <laughs> in between your silly songs, and it could be on Spotify. It could just be posted up. But I love, I love. Your songs, and I always go chase them down. And what? that doesn't even—you don't even have to do that. You, you, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll never find the one we're gonna do today. It was recorded in 19, really? 1926 of eighteen ninety nine song, eighteen eighty nine song. But anyway, appreciate it, man. Y'all stop. Y'all, keep listening. Stop by and smell some of my boogly fried plants, because I live in Fondren too. All righty, folks. Booglify. That's when a plant doesn't doesn't just freeze, but it freezes, and when it thaws, the cellular water in the cells leaks out and drips and oozes and and st- ugh, booglify. Because there's not another word for it. Anyway, uh, the native plant of the week I'm talking about is called Yopon holly. Y a u p o n holly. It's a native plant. The tree form. The dwarf Yopon hollies. They have red berries right now. The birds love them. They're nice, durable. They'll grow in anywhere, cemeteries. They're great, tough plants. But there's a new place up in the Delta who's planning it to make Yopon tea with it. And I'm intrigued about that. We're going to follow that up later. But Yopon holly is our native plant of the week. It's a great plant for all around. We're going to take a quick break, come back with more of the Gestalt Gardener here on Mississippi Public Broadcast. Me and Java and all those folks stick with us. Hi, Larry Morrissey with the Arts Commission, reminding you to tune in for the Arts Hour. 
We have in-depth conversations with Mississippi artists, writers, musicians, and other creatives. The Mississippi Arts Hour every Sunday at 5 on MPB Radio or download it as a podcast. All righty, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing. Um, you know, give us a call. We've got the lines open, and it's toll-free, 1-877-MPB-RING. Before we go any further, let me uh, uh, share a little anecdote that happened this way. I got my first jab, my first uh, uh, vac- what do you call it? vaccine, vaccinate, what is it called? Yeah, vaccination. Did you call it a jab? A jab, yeah. <laughs> you know, this, you get, a, get a jab in your arm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I finally got my, my appointment because I'm in that generation. They, and, uh, and they said 1040 in the morning, right? And it's a couple of miles. You know how I am, Java. It's a pretty day. I walked there. And I got there about 1030. And they said, uh, we did walk-ups earlier. I said, uh, I just walked two miles. And I've been cooped up all week. And uh, I want my jab. I, I want me jab. <laughs> and she looked. She said, I, I said, I'm not going to turn around and walk two miles back without getting my jab just because y'all didn't tell me that I had to drive through the drive through Anyway, long story short, she, she said, okay, well, get in line behind that Honda. <laughs> and I, I walked up behind a car, and I stood there in the line of cars till a National Guardsman came over and, and grabbed me. <laughs> now, that's, now, that's why. Because with the, what, the week? Were you supposed to get it last week? Wouldn't it, wouldn't no, it no, yeah, it was. It was I, I was on time. It was supposed to be this okay, week. But, okay. But I said, it's, yeah, I've been cooped up all week. I walked two miles. You're not going to tell me that I'm too late for something. But anyway, when I was uh, when I was walking up, the uh, the the medical uh, gal who was uh, you know taking down the information, she said, Are "You failed her." I said, yeah. She said, oh, my gosh, my son listens to you on the Gestalt Gardening. I said, well, that's cool. That's great. Woohoo!" She did a selfie with me with masks. But uh, I told her I would give her son a shout-out. Okay. Is, this is a shout-out to little Carter Bell. He's five years old, and he helps grow kale. I'm thinking any little five-year-old guy who helps grow and harvest and eats kale. Listen to the Gestalt Gardener. Here's a big shout-out to you, Carter Bell. You go. You go. It sounds like he's been here before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I was walking back, uh, the flower, this was the first day after everything thawed back out. Dandelions were open, and they had honeybees on the dandelions. I'm so glad I live in a neighborhood where people won't spray everything. But honeybees, if it wasn't for those dandelions, which are not from around here, the honeybees, which are not from around here, would have been starving to death. So anyway, I'm glad I live in a place where we have color in the middle of the winter right after a hard, hard freeze. So anyway, um, I get, think we could go to, to to Tupelo. Hi, Belle. Good morning. Hi. How are you? So, uh, pretty good. Cheerful. What's up? Oh, not much. I was just, I had a random question that's been in my head for the last week or so. Okay. Um, I have two raised beds that were not very fruitful last year Mm -hmm. in front of my house. I just kind of had a late jump on it. Vegetable type type raised beds? Um, Or flat. They're two feet deep. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you go. And I put cardboard at the bottom. I put some uh, other mulch on top of that. Uh huh. Or other particle, and then yeah. Uh, so I've been using it as a compost ball for the last, I guess, six months. Fantastic. Um, but the problem is, I don't think there are there worms in there. Do I need to go buy worms? And if so, what kind of worms should I buy? Well, did, did you put this on top of ground or on like concrete or something? On top of ground in my yeah, backyard. There'll be worms there. Here's the deal: the the type of worms that we have here in the dirt. You know, regular dirt, not the red wigglers that they put in vermicompost. But the most common kind of worms we have are what they call uh, earthworm, night crawlers. And right. they, they have tunnels. They make tunnels that go up and down, vertical tunnels. They're catfish okay? fishing worms. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there's some that are stinky kind of worms, and they go back and forth. But anyway, the ones okay. that, the, the night crawlers, they come up at night, and they, with their tail in the hole, and they reach around, and they pull stuff in, and they pull it down and eat it that way. So if you have... Okay. Dirt beneath there, there are probably some worms that have come up through there. Okay. And, if, and, they and come up so, the yeah, heavy have, layer of cardboard. Oh yeah, yeah, the cardboard. If you did it six months ago, it ain't there anymore. Okay. It ain't there unless cool. it was waxy stuff. But okay. uh, I bet you, if you go out there and dig around, you're gonna find some worms. I okay. bet you. Okay. And the best way for this, I know you know we're about to be planting. Um, so do I need to just? Start rotating that dirt pretty regularly. 
You really, you know, if if you manage it, the worms can actually do a pretty good job for you. If you just throw compost on there every, you know, uh, regularly, what'll happen is they come up at night and they eat it and they take it down. They actually dig vertical holes and they circulate stuff. It's like they're 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 digging for you. That's what I do in some of my raised beds. But it's a good idea if you can. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be. It's, it's fun for me to say because I do it myself and it makes me feel kind of smug. But if you go out there with a shovel and at least every now and then dig down through it and dig some of your dirt that was down beneath it and mm-hmm. and t- you know dig a big shovel full turn it upside down it's where your dirt's on top the compost on the bottom and sort of chop at it a couple of times by adding dirt to that compost it gets richer it gets firmer you don't have to water as much plants are growing a lot you know plants don't like real dirt even though farmers grow in real dirt and they don't right. like all potting soil a combination of the yeah, two is better and other stuff in there. Well, I, I just turned my dirt over yesterday. You know, I've got a raised bed I did uh, almost a year ago. I did in, in April, uh, late mm-hmm. March or April last year. And I went out uh, yesterday hoping it's going to rain today. And I just dug down and turned it all up, the mulch and stuff on top. I put it upside down. And uh, and I found worms there. There were no, there's awesome. never there's never been a garden there ever. This, you know, my house, first, huh. first, first house built there back in the 19... 19- 40s or so never been a, a garden in this spot and within months i had big worm but anyway dig down and bring some of that dirt up and stir it in a little bit or at least spread it across the top of your other stuff and it'll firm everything up and it'll inoculate it with good bacteria and worms and stuff and it'll really be a whole lot better well that sounds great oh Thank it's not, it's not it, it ain't fun bell it's not gonna be fun Oh, it's okay. I'm but, I'm ready to get dirty. Hey, it'll make you feel a little smug, and that's okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I really enjoy your show. Thanks for doing what you do, and I agree with your previous two callers. We're in marketing <laughs> here in Tupelo, and I think we could all just chip in and do it for free for you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm whatever. Sorry. Back to dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Hey, good luck Thank on you. it. Call anytime. Yes, sir. Bye bye. Oh, go out of Port Gibson. Collie, what's up this morning? Hi, Felder. Howdy. I sure like your little town. I used to I used to do, do t- uh, uh, walks around the historic houses with the garden club there, uh, doing talks about the plants. What's going on? Well, I have a camellia in my front yard that has always had white flowers. It blooms uh, early, along with the sasanguas, but it's not a sasangua, and it keeps blooming, but. This uh, yesterday, I noticed the uh, growth that's coming at the bottom of the tree is producing red pink flowers. Yeah. So how did that happen? Well, how long, is it an old, old, old plant? It is. Hmm. Um, you know, you, I've got many other camellia bushes in the yard that yeah. are pink and red. And okay, now I'm gonna I'm make an educated, well-educated horticultural guess here, and this could be true. But I'm just guessing here. This happens a lot. First of all, uh, camellias and other plants they 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 have chance mutations. That's that's where they come up new varieties a lot of times. They'll find a like a golden delicious apple on a red delicious tree, and they cut it off, and that's where all the golden delicious apples came from. One branch on one red delicious tree, and uh, camellias will do that. A lot of times they'll revert from variegated to solid. Uh, so it could just be that you've got a branch down there that came out, and for whatever reason has changed. That that happens. Uh, it also could be that even though it's an old plant, it may have been grafted and that the rootstock is sprouting out. Mm. You know, th- those are those are real possibility. You know, a lot of camellias are just rooted. A lot of them were grafted because it was just easier. I think there were a lot of a lot of grafting on my other camellias. Well, so if the, if, the, if if this possible. if this is coming down close to the ground, there's a good chance that it's the the uh, the, the rootstock that has sprouted out. And if you like it, fine. If you don't, just cut it off without leaving a stub. Yeah, no, I want to keep it white. Um, okay. Yeah, cut well, it just, off. yeah, just, right. just, 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 you know, and, and this happens a lot. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for your advice. Okay. Okay. And I want to, but you, you add, there's something intriguing you said. You said it's not a Sasanqua, but it may not, it's got big leaves like a japonica. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just, you know, there's lots of early, mid, and late season bloomers. We had, I went out the day before this freeze and took pictures. I collected flowers, including at the Eudora Welty House, of camellias. I got maybe, oh, a dozen and a half different camellias. I made a nice little 
arrangement with them on the on the ground. Took a picture of them uh, just to see w- which ones would still be blooming a week later. And a lot of them have new buds coming out, but a lot of them don't. See, so the early bloomers they got wiped out. The late bloomers they're going to do fine. Mid season, a little of each. Well, I think my white the, these early bloomers, this particular uh, tree, is going to bloom again. I mean, yeah. it's not buds. Well, if you you know, it's it's just like pluck it out an eyebrow that's growing in a wrong place. Just cut that branch off. Okay, I can relate. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kylie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Joe, I didn't. I shouldn't have gone there, right? I mean, I was talking about me. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, let's go to uh, let's slide up to Carth and talk with Mike. Mike, how you doing this morning? Good morning. Getting lots of rain up how, here. How cold did it get last week for you? Oh, it got uh, in the single digits. Yeah, uh, but... one or two nights. Well, y'all have uh, had it a time or two before, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, glad to be over with. But, yeah. Well, what's uh, going I had on? a couple of couple of questions. Uh, when is the earliest I can set out the uh, Bermuda grass side? I'm about 20 miles south of the Tennessee state line. Now you can you can put sod out pretty as long as it's dormant. You can put it out pretty much any time, even in the winter time. But here's the deal: it's not going to do anything until after it green when when it greens up in spring. That what they call spring transition on these grasses that kickstarts the root system for the spring. The reason a lot of people, you know, they fertilize too early or whatever. If you if so, the earlier you put it out, the longer it's going to sit there until it greens up and starts growing a root. And if we have some warm uh, sunny days for a week, that stuff can dry out and die. See, so if you put it out early, you just need to be prepared to to water it at least once a week to keep it from drying out in the sun and the wind. But uh, to answer your question, if you, it start, it's going to start greening up, depend, in Carthage, I'm going to say sometime it may be late March, but definitely April. And when it starts greening up, that's when it starts growing the new roots. So the sooner you can do that, you know, the, the main thing is don't if you put it out early, don't let it dry out. Probably in April then. What I want to do is take advantage of the spring rains. Yeah. Uh, where I wouldn't have to water so much. I've just got a small spot. To yeah. Put well, it a, in. C- a couple of real quick tips. Uh, one is if you'll work the dirt up, you don't have to till it or anything, but make sure that the that the, when you lay the sod, its roots are in contact with just dirt, just dirt. You know, don't lay it on top of a bunch of stuff. And if you'll put it on top of that and, the, you know, walk on it or something, mash it down to where it's, it's in contact with your dirt, then the new roots will grow quickly into your dirt here's the thing you need to tease those roots down uh put the water if it rains enough to put water way down below the the sod into your dirt then you can let the sod dry out a little bit and those new roots will grow down looking for moisture and it only takes three or four weeks for for grass to get established as if it's been there for years because grass only lives for individual plants for a month or so so after a month or two if you hadn't kept it too wet, those roots would be down there, and the grass will if things had been out there, you know, since you know uh, last century. Okay, great. My other question: uh, When is the earliest uh, that I need to fertilize rose bushes? Well, the, you know, the plants are dormant right now, even though they're going to start budding out. Some of mine are already budded out. Um, but really, they, they don't really need fertilizer until after they start growing and pulling on their roots and all like that. So the earliest would be, you know, March or, or early April. But there's really not a timeline. If you fertilize them just once every three years, sometime in the spring or summer, there's roses all over Corinth and out, out in the country. They ain't never been fertilized, and they do great. So I'm just saying, don't worry about the earliest. You don't want to push them. You just want to put some nutrients out there for when they need it. And, and they're not going to start really using it till after they leaf out. So if I fertilized last year, it's probably not necessary this year unless maybe some water soluble. Yeah, if, you, if you're in a race with somebody. But, you know, right around old country houses, look in cemeteries. There are roses in cemeteries that dead people can grow. Ain't never been fertilized. <laughs> so, you know what? Fertilizing helps plants too much, can push them and cause them to stress. So if you fertilize roses every year or two, they'll be fine. If you're in a race with somebody, a couple of times a year, but every time use less at a time. I understand. Well, I appreciate the information. You have a good day. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Enjoy your program. Thank you, sir. Uh, music or 
Okay, let's talk to Hugh. Hugh's been hanging on from Ocean Springs down the coast. Woo, we went from the ice box to the Gulf Coast. What's up, Hugh? Well, um, I have a question about a couple of things here before I start trying to move plants or cutting them back. And one is my uh, allspice sweet shrub. Yep. Uh, do I need to let it uh, make leaves, or can I move it before it? Like one of them is starting to bud. It gets warm air from the uh, on-demand hot water heater. Huh. And then the other two are further away, and they're I, just. I think of those would know? be. I think of those as being evergreen. They should have leaves on them. Well, it froze down here. A couple oh, oh of weeks yeah, ago. yeah. Okay, okay. Just old stuff. Yeah. If you want I mean, to move it now, now's a good time to move it. I would cut it back a little bit. And if you don't want to cut it back till after it blooms, still cut it back. Because when okay. you move it, you can leave a lot of the important feeder roots behind, and you need to balance the top of those roots. So, uh, anytime you move it, you know now over the next uh, month or so, it's perfectly fine. If it's already leafed out, be sure to cut it back a little bit. And like I say, those bloom typically late, late winter, early spring, and if or, or maybe mid spring on the coast. If uh, when it gets through blooming, go ahead and cut it back a little bit to balance the top a little bit. Because I'm uh, okay, and then my. Uh... Abelia, do those ever get pruned, or is it okay if I just cut it off with the lawnmower when I go by? <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of sprawls out. Yeah, is this, you know? this is that big old-fashioned one, big one? Well, it's not real big yet. It's only about three feet tall, but okay. it wants to spread. Yeah. Abelia is uh, one of my favorite plants. By the way, it's one of the best pollinator shrubs for the south. Uh, I mean, it's it has covered those little bitty tiny white flowers. Yeah, yeah, and bees, hummingbirds, uh, uh, the hummingbird moths, all those things. It's a great one. Uh, they bloom on new growth, so uh, you know when it gets bigger than you want, you can. We used to have to cut my great grandmother's down every five or six years to where it's like knee high, and they get up overhead high. But there's some dwarf abelias that may not need as much pruning. Anyway, it doesn't hurt to prune them. They bloom on new growth. Okay. And then my poinsettias were in a protected part of the house, so I thought, but they just froze too, you know? Yeah. They don't like it here. They don't like it here. I mean, no. they were doing so well, and then... Uh, if I cut them off, are they going to come back, or are they just did? Yeah. When, when, you, when you said they did okay, they still got the red things on them? Not anymore. Okay. Well, that's okay because that's last year's. Uh, Poinsettia growers, when they, uh, you know, they cut them back. Wherever you make a cut, it sprout back out. They bloom on in this fall on what grows this year. You could prune it, you know, down to just five inches tall, and it's going to branch back out. Okay. With strong new growth. The root thing, you know, I heard uh, the gardener you were talking to a couple of weeks ago, Gary Bachman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's down in your neck a little. If it's uh if it's twenty six degrees outside, it's twenty six degrees underside the cover, you know. So yeah, and you know he and I talked about it ahead anything. of time. Is absolutely <laughs> like he said, and he's even said that on Southern Gardener on, on and and his thing uh, that he writes for for the Extension Service. Um, all you can do is wait and see, and if it makes you feel better covering it up, go for it. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, all right. Well, thanks so much. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, now the tune. I want to set this up real quick. This was written in 1899, recorded in 1926, and it was a tune that I learned on my trombone when I was in high school, which got me auditions for the Lions Band, which got me into the junior college band, which got me in the Navy Band, which paid for my college, which got me the job I got today. So this old tune is what got me my start. It's called Old Home Down on the Farm. A lad I used to dwell in a place I loved so well, far away among the clover and the bees. Where the morning glory vine round our cabin porch did twine, and the robin redbreast sang among the trees. Many weary years have passed since I saw the old home last. But that memory ever lingers like a charm Every old familiar place Every kind and loving face In my happy boyhood days down on the farm There was father old and gray And a sister young and gay And a mother dear to keep us from all harm there I passed life's sunny hours 
running wild among the flowers in my happy boyhood days down on the farm. Then today as I draw near to that home I love so dear, there a stranger came to meet me at the door. Round the place there's many a change, and the faces all seem strange. Not a loved one there to meet me as of yore. For my mother dear is laid neath the elm tree's quiet shade, where the golden summer sun shines bright and warm. And beside the old fireplace, I can see a stranger's face in my father's old armchair down on the farm. There was father old and gray, and a sister young and gay, and a mother dear to keep us from all harm. There I passed life's sunny hours, running wild among the flowers, in my happy boyhood days down on the farm. All righty, folks. Hope y'all enjoy that old home down on the farm. Um, that was by Vernon Dahl. I can't remember his last name. Anyway, did Vernon Dahl Hearts. Dahl Hearts. He did, he did a lot of stuff back in the 20s. Uh, by the way, the rose pruning and rose rooting uh, workshop that they were going to have a couple of weeks ago, but it rained, it's been rescheduled for tomorrow morning, and I'm going to be there. It's at Greenwood Cemetery, which is downtown Jackson. If you can find the state capitol. Exactly a block north. Just north of the state capitol is a Supreme Court building, and this cemetery is right on the back side of that. It's the old green historic 19, uh, 1820s Greenwood Cemetery. A lot of roses there. It's going to be a bunch of folks there with pruning shears and uh, gloves, and we're going to prune some of these roses and show you how to root, and you can take all the cuttings you want. Matter of fact, I've got some of the, the cuttings from my own rose right here I brought in there. I would say... Java, you're young enough to remember. You're old enough to remember pencils. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't think they make pencils anymore. These are about the size of skinny pencils. True. And and these are the cuttings that I take, and I stick them about halfway in the dirt this time of year, and they root. But anyway, we're going to be showing you how to root stuff, how to prune stuff, and if you have questions about that kind of things, come on down Greenwood Cemetery, starting at nine o'clock tomorrow saturday morning and if you hear this on the saturday broadcast we'll still be there till about 11 or so 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 come on down it's free and it's uh, it's real gardeners we'll have a good time uh, now let's go over to covington louisiana and talk with polly polly i appreciate you hanging on so long what's up hey Felder. well i know you've talked about this so many times but I have weeds like crazy growing in my yard. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not supposed to put the weed killer, the weed and feed together. You do it separately. Right. Is it it too early to start trying to kill them? No, here's here's the deal. Matter of fact, it's almost getting too late. Uh, oh. When, when these, these, these little wildflower things grow out in their lawn, we call weeds. The ones that, that bloom in the spring started growing back in the fall. You know, they were small. You didn't notice them. They weren't blooming. And now that, it, you know, we've had some cold weather start to warm up, they're going to start getting bigger and more flowers, and they're going to start sending energy up into flowers and seeds. Weed killers work best on plants the sending stuff from leaves down to the roots. See, okay. so if you wanted to treat them, use a liquid spray. Mm-hmm. And go ahead and do it, you know, it needs to have a, right. a few hours to dry before rain. But the sooner you do it, the better, because those things, the, you know, when they start blooming, the weed killers get less effective. Uh, okay, okay. And then after that, how long before you can feed? Well, a, a good rule of thumb, and this is what I learned in Turf Management Mississippi State, what every publication of Texas Carolina says, wait till after the grass has been greened up in motor time or two. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned with one of the callers earlier, when the grass greens up in the spring, that's mm-hmm. when it jump starts the new root system for the summer. And if you fertilize before then, it can throw it, that green into a lot more green and interrupt the rooting process. So let's wait till oh. you've mowed it, and which is a month after everybody else has done theirs. Too early. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. 
All right. Thank you so much. Love your show. Appreciate you being part of it. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay, folks, you want to give us a call? Toll free one eight seven seven MPB ring. Uh, the edible I brought in today was plant that astoundingly made it through nine degrees. And uh, you know, a lot of people get tired of me talking about this plant, but it's got bluish green leaves, and it's called kale. K A L E. Uh, there's purple kale. There's this is the blue or the lasanata kale. Some people call it dinosaur kale because it's it's ruffled like a dinosaur's skin would be. Uh, kale and collars were not slowed down in the least by that cold weather. And all you gotta do is is uh, pull that little mid rib off and cook them down. And the nice part about this blue kale is you don't have to use bacon grease to eat it. It's nice just like it is. Uh, so anyway, that's my my edible for the week. I mentioned the the native plant of the week is my uh, the yopon holly, the native yopon holly, the pretty red berries. My heirloom is, uh, well, I brought some rose cuttings. And by the way, whether or not I ever do Instagram, we always post a picture of what I bring in every week on the MPB, on the Gestalt Gardener thing. Java, you do a great job of putting that up every week. Well, we said, well, yeah, like you, you bring in your flowers, as you say, show and tell. We post it up on the podcast, uh-huh. and you can subscribe to the podcast, get the picture, and get uh, the show uh, using any podcasting app. Or um, I know it sounds like a plug, but it really is the best way. Download the MPB public media app. And yes. it's just it's it's all there. It's free. It's absolutely it's free. free. But anyway, so I'm, I've got uh, some some of the rose uh, cuttings that are so you can see the the size roses I do the blue kale the yopon holly and also the sweet little early daffodil called tete tete a tete tete little small things not much bigger than a quarter pretty little cheery yellow things on it's a dwarf daffodil they only bloom about oh five or six eight inches or so at the most the leaves are short and stocky so they don't flop over like other day lilies a little tete tete daffodil which is the single best-selling daffodil on earth it also happens to be every time you plant one of these bulbs next year you got three and then you got five you know they multiply and spread and they are not bothered by cold at all, so I'm gonna I'm gonna post a picture of that by my nasty MPB cup that I don't ever wash. It's just it's not dirty. It's just stained from coffee. That's just part of my thing. Real real coffee drinkers know. A, yeah, real coffee drinkers know. I, yeah, I could clean it if I wanted to, but I sort of like a badge of honor here. I make up my bed, but I don't I don't clean my coffee cup. Okay, let's uh, let's go over to Florence and see what Roger's up to. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks again for what you do. Sure. Really, really appreciate it. I uh, can't help but comment on the, uh, that's not why I call, but on the uh, narcissus, on, on the uh, narcissus, or uh-huh. whatever it is. Yeah, daffodil, narcissus, the same thing. Daffodil. The one, yep. The first one came up during the snow, and I didn't discover it until the snow went away, and here's this bent over daffodil. I raised it up. It's still the first one down here at Green Hope. So I took a picture this morning of the daffodil, and in the background is a pile of snow under my one eave. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the combination. That's not why I called. I called about Maypop or, or uh, Passionflower. Right. I have some seeds from last year that a good friend harvested, and I love those things. I think they ought to be the Mississippi flower. Well, maybe they are. Anyway. That's I want to plant some. Uh, what advice do you have about that? You know, plant? it's it's a real good question. And by the way, that the 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 passion flower, passion flora incarnata, which is by the way, narcissus is Latin for daffodil, which is folk for narcissus. They're the same. Two two different ones, fancy ones, folk, but daffodil and narcissus the same thing. Uh, anyway, the 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 passion, the maypop, uh, is even on ancient. 300-year-old tombstones in Europe. It's such a cool plant, and it grows wild all over Mississippi in the poorest dirt. And if you plant it really good dirt, you're going to get all vines, no flowers. It wants to be in fence row conditions. Now, here's oh. here's the thing, though. I don't – some plants, the seeds have got to be – the fruit eaten by, by wild animals or birds and then cleaned and the seed deposited. Sometimes they sprout right away. Sometimes they have to go over the wintertime and go through the cold spell before they sprout. I don't know about – I, I I I don't know about this one. So what I would do is, uh, are you online at home? I mean, you got computer and all that stuff. Yes. Thank okay. You. Just just uh, uh, Google um, uh, uh, Maypop 
or whatever, and the, our native one's called Incarnata. Look, for, you know, don't get one of these fancy tropical ones, but see what it says about that, because that's what I would do if I was. Matter of fact, um, well, we don't have time for me to do it while we're on the air, but um, need to see about growing uh, uh, maypop from seed because it might have been that you needed to plant them as soon as you got them back in the fall. might be they need to be put in the refrigerator for a, a couple of months. I don't know. Okay. I'll check it out, and I'll thank you again. Keep smiling. Uh, I appreciate it, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny when I was walking back from getting my, my COVID jab that the, the wildfire, this was the day after all that freeze, and the weather was great. But there were bees on the little wild, the dandelions, the hen bit, which are a couple of our of our of our uh, wildflowers out there, and I would encourage folks who have a perfect lawn, which is fine, plant just something out there in a flower bed for for uh, pollinators, because in the winter time they really really need something to feed on to get their nectar and the pollen. But if you've got a few dandelions and some hen bit, uh, mow around a clump. Leave something for the bees and butterflies because they, to, you know, when it warms up, we have butterflies here in the middle of the winter in the deep south, and they are hungry. Uh, I mean, they're 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 looking around saying, "Yeah, well, she done got hern, but I wear mine." <laughs> A little RuPaul there thrown in, folks. I'm a horticulturist, fellow Russian Java. You know, we're just having a fun time. Every Friday morning. <laughs> you know, there's horticulture can be serious, and I can make your eyes bleed with stupid detail about horticulture science, but we're talking about gardening. We're just talking about gardening, and so I will cut some slack. I will, I will cut some corners and say, here's the way gardeners do it, but if you want me to get into more detail because you think I'm too stupid to know the, the truth of it, l- bring it on. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. I'm horticulturist fellow Russia Java Chapman. Kevin Farrell, uh, another producer here at MPB, is our phone greeter. We'll be right back after this. All right, folks, welcome back. we got time to squeeze in another call or two. If you want to give us a call, i got the lines wide open, one eight seven seven mpb ring I do have – I was just checking some of my notes, you know, to remind myself to remind folks that the Rose Pruning and Rooting Workshop, which is free, is going to be at 9 o'clock Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, uh, Greenwood Cemetery, one block north of the state capitol, downtown Jackson. But while I was doing that, I noticed some stuff that I made notes for myself – and here's a note that I made to myself on Wednesday. And all it says is, this is on my, it says, Street Early Frosty, Middle Alaska, Back Oregon Sugar. <laughs> is that what? what uh, you, you know as much as I do. New York Times crossword yeah. puzzle? <laughs> no, no. Street Early Frosty, Middle Alaska, Back Oregon Sugar. So for some reason, that was important for me to write down at 5 in the afternoon last Wednesday. I don't know. Well, let's see. You were out, so you probably were walking. You were walking the streets. Who and knows? Who you knows? Slipping on ice. Uh, I don't know. I don't hey, know. I only slipped twice. I only I only fell once, and I have to. I I really hurt myself too. But. Well, I, I managed to. I, I I have a special phrase. I say is very explicit, and as long as I say it before I hit the ground, I don't hurt myself. I mean, my feet go out from under me. If I can get out real quick, I'm not going to hurt myself. But sorry about the neighbors. Anyway, uh, again, I'm going to post pictures of this blue kale, which made it through the freeze, the little dandelions, which are covered with honeybees right now, my tete-a-tete daffodil, yopon holly with the pretty red berries, native plant, and my rose uh, cuttings to show you kind of what I do. You know, not the ends of the branches, not the big old thick stuff, but this, you know, the last year's growth, stuff that's not quite as big around as a pencil, not quite that long. I just stick them in some dirt out in a sunny flower bed. And by springtime, when it's time to pull my violas, my pansies up, the roses are rooted, ready to go out. And uh, I usually take a plastic spoon and I put a number, uh, use a sharpie, put a number on it, stick it in, so I, and then write down what, the, what roses they are. Otherwise, they all kind of look alike till they bloom. But anyway, hope to see some of y'all uh, down at Greenwood Cemetery in North Jackson, uh, 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 downtown Jackson, Saturday. Uh, hope y'all have a, 
a, a, a good week. Those of you who lost your power and your water and all like that, I, I did too, and I'm sorry about it, and some people suffering. Uh, but the world is healing itself. There's flowers out there, camellias, and there's bees, there's, there's butterflies. There's, it's, it's coming back together, folks. And that's what we do. Gardening offers hope and healing for a troubled world. And I really appreciate that. Hey, if you get a chance, I know it's kind of early. Garden centers aren't really stocking up yet for stuff. But they'll take a kid to a farmer's market or a garden center or something. Show them how to do what we do best. It's so important for young kids, uh, like the like the young fella who listened to our program um, named Carter Bell, to show them how to get dirty. 